Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be completely different than anything that I've done before and I'm not making over uh, decor in this one. I'm actually going to make over some uh, some clothing and then I'm going to make some shabby chic jewelry. So if that's not something that you're interested in, you might want to just wait on my next video. But I just thought I would try something different. Uh, I've been working on some of my clothing, so I thought it would make a good video. So I'm going to start with this jacket. Now, I've had this blue jean jacket for a while, and uh, I just never wear it. Uh, and I know that a lot of dresses look good with a blue jean jacket over them but i just felt like this one wasn't dressy enough and i again i just never wear it so uh, because my friend myra had sent me so much vintage lace this was one that was in there and uh, it is perfect to glue on the bottom of this jacket now if you like to sew then obviously the best option would be to sew this but i'm using fabric sure bonder glue and um, that can be washed uh, it's it is washer safe so um, i probably wouldn't put it in the dryer because the heat would uh, would melt the glue but as long as you don't put it in the dryer you can wash it so I'm just gluing this to the inside of the bottom of this jacket. Again, this may be something that you're not at all interested I just in. I just wanted to do something a little different. And um, I, I was working on the, this. And actually, my sister and I both did some, uh, some of our clothing. And I just decided to make it a video. Now you could also use just a liquid fabric glue on this if you wanted. Uh, I just felt like this would be a quicker hold. And so that's why I decided to do the um, hot glue instead. Now my sister sewed hers because she doesn't mind sewing, but sewing machines don't seem to like me very well. Uh, I, I always mess up the tension and I, I don't know why, but. I just can't keep the tension right on a sewing machine. And then once I get it mixed, messed up, I can't get it readjusted. So I gave up on sewing machines a long time ago. Now, if you don't have uh, lace that is this long, uh, this wide like this, then you can always uh, just kind of layer your laces. But this one worked really well because of its width and I love the look of this lace and then where I cut that off on the end I cut it off just slightly longer so that I could fold that edge over and glue it and that would finish would finish the edge uh, give it a finished look without unraveling and then, of course, I needed the lace somewhere else on, on the jacket so that it would look like it belonged. So I did the same thing on the ends of the sleeves, except uh, I did use the same lace because I wanted it to match. But instead of using it the full width that it was, uh, I just cut the scalloped edge off the length that I needed it or the width that I needed it and glued that to the inside of the bottom edge of the sleeve. And I finished the edges off the same way. I just folded them over and glued them down. And then when I cut that last, the edge, the end of it rather, I, I cut it a little bit longer like I did on the bottom and glued that finished edge. And I think this made the cutest little jacket. And uh, you actually could add more lace, maybe, if you wanted to, it to be very lacy. I didn't want to overdo it was my thing. But um, you could add some lace to uh, the little bottom part of the flap on those pockets there at the top. Uh, you could add just a thinner lace there if you wanted. Again, I just didn't want it to be too busy, so I felt like this was enough. 
I have an extra special treat for you guys on this video because uh, my granddaughter Shiloh has decided to model or has agreed to model all these pieces and so I thought this would be something fun we could do together. I bought this dress at Walmart several years ago and I love that it's so comfy. I love the fabric. I love the length of the dress and it looks good with just a little jacket or sweater over it, but I don't like all this string that, uh, that you have to uh, tighten up and tight. You've got just all that hanging there. I just didn't like it at all, but I really did like the dress, so I bought it anyway, and I have worn it a couple of times, but I figured if I could uh, get rid of that string, then I might wear it more. So, uh, the first thing I did was put some cardboard in it so that I didn't get any glue on the back and glue the front to the back. That wouldn't be good. So, I'm lining this all up and I'm going to glue it together. Uh, instead of that being uh, the string coming through that, these are little loops for that. So, I will line those loops up together and uh, glue them together, and then I will put some buttons on it. Now, again, this could all be sewn together and would probably be even better, but um, I'm going to avoid sewing here, and I'm just going to very carefully glue it together. And I press it together well and make sure that it's going to really hold. And then I just found uh, some coordinating buttons and just glued those down uh, in the middle of each of these loops. And uh, you couldn't really even tell that it did, wasn't supposed to be there. But obviously, you're going to have that little area there down the center where you can see through it. And I didn't want to have to wear a, a shirt under it if, if I didn't want to. So, um, so what I did with that, once I got it all glued together, was I took another piece of lace and glued it to the inside of that front there. So I just picked a lace that was a little more solid and, um, and I uh, cut it the length that it needed to be. I, need, I made sure that it was the width that it needed to be and that it was more solid and then I cut it the length and glued that to the inside of, uh, of the dress. And this really fixed the problem and I was real happy with how it turned out. And here is my Shiloh wearing it. And here is the jacket. So as you can see, that dress fit them up somewhat without changing them up a lot. And that was a very simple fix. So a very sweet viewer sent me some of these appliques, which I absolutely love. And I've been using them a lot. Um, and these were the inspiration for my next piece. So what I did is I cut a piece of Warm and Natural. Now you could use felt if you wanted. Um, but I just cut it uh, the shape of this applique, but a little bit smaller so that you the lace comes out further than the warm and natural fabric. And for those of you who don't know what warm and natural is, you can get it in the quilt batting. It's actually a type of quilt batting, and it comes in a bag, and um, I just cut it up and use it for different uh, projects. So this Warm and Natural, I have hot glued it on he, the, the applique on the Warm and Natural with uh, fabric hot glue. Now you could probably just use regular hot glue here because I'm sure this will never get washed. So, um, so the fabric hot glue is so that if it were washed, you would be able to wash it. Now you couldn't put it in the dryer still, but it could be washed. 
So now I'm just taking some strips of fabric. Now most of these are just torn strips of fabric and there is one little uh, pink ribbon there as you can see, just a sheer pink ribbon that I get at the Dollar Tree. And I think I have about four here. And I just cut some long strips of it. I didn't even measure it. Uh, you want it very long though, because you're better off having to cut some of it off than it not being long enough. And I want this to be kind of a longer necklace if I didn't say this is gonna be a necklace. So what I've done here is folded it in half, tied a knot in the center, and then tied a knot every four inches all the way to the end. And then I snipped off those ends to neaten them up and they will get glued to the back of this warm and natural. And that will be uh, what, what it hangs from, obviously. This is such a simple way to make a necklace, necklace and this is a very shabby chic look. Uh, I know it's not for everyone, but um, it's definitely something that I would wear to church because I do like to wear um, lace. You definitely wouldn't know that by the way I dress in my shop, but I... I dress at the shop to work. Um, I, when I first opened my store, I planned on dressing up more, and um, I just got paint over all over everything, so everybody knows that I just dress to paint. But again, when I dress up, I like to wear soft lace a lot. So now I'm going to uh, add some shabby roses. And I say all the time, you can either um, you can either build these little ro roses on your project, or you can cut out a little circle and build them on that a little circle from a piece of cloth, uh, and just and then just make them on that, and then glue them on. Uh, when I can, I like to make mine on the actual project, and the reason is because then I can determine how how large I need it. And I can just kind of keep uh, twisting until I get the size rows that I need. And with this, I just tie a knot in the end of a piece of usually torn fabric. You can use lace or ribbon, but um, usually I use torn fabric of some kind. And, um, and then I tie a knot in the very end of it. I glue that knot to the center of where I want my rose or to the center of a little round piece of cloth. And then I just twist and wrap, adding a dot of glue here and there until I get the, right, the rose the size that I want it. Now, if you want to add more dimension to your rows, it helps if you change directions that you're twisting. Um, I'm going to change it some on these, but I don't need a lot of fullness here. So, uh, it, it's okay if I continue to wrap in the same direction. Now, one of the fabrics that I'm using here uh, that I've torn to make the strand with is just a regular curtain shear. I use those all the time. They're very inexpensive, even if you have to buy them new, but you can usually thrift them or especially find them at yard sales at a really good price. So what I do is I just cut a, a little slit in the end and it will rip just like you're ripping either a sheet or, um, or your um, tea towel or any kind of fabric that you that will rip easily, this sheer fabric will rip very, very easily. And I use it a lot because I really like the look of it. It just has this wispy look to it when you tear it. And sometimes it gets a little stringy when you tear it, uh, just depending on maybe what direction you've torn it or, um, I really don't know what affects that, that sometimes it's a little bit stringier. But I found a solution to that. You can take a heat gun and hold next to those edges and it will curl those little wispy things up and you don't even hardly see them. 
And if you, um, if you hold it close enough and long enough, obviously you don't want to hold it too long or you'll burn your fabric, but it will kind of crinkle your ribbon and that gives it a really good look as well. So I just keep adding roses to this until I get it as full as I want it. And I like to have some larger ones and then some smaller ones to kind of fill in. And then I'm going to add some pearl beads to this and, um, and just keep adding again until I get the look that I want. Now, if you like bling, obviously you could add some bling to this. I don't. Um, or if you want uh, to add some buttons to it, you could do that as well. I, did, I really just didn't want the buttons since I'm going to be wearing this to church. I just didn't. That's just not a look that I was going for. But you could definitely do that, and that would be pretty as well. At some point, I want to do more jewelry like this because I just really like the look of it. And if you're like me, um, I can't wear most costume jewelry anyway because I have an allergy to most metals. So, um, so this is great for me just to ha have it made of cloth. Now, at some point when I do another uh, video with jewelry, uh, I think I'm going to add some of my resin molds to them as well. Honestly, I just think the possibilities are endless with these. And um, you don't even have to do this shape like I have. You could do a smaller base uh, for yours. Or you could do uh, maybe a resin cross over uh, an applique and I think that would be pretty also and I think these will make really good Christmas gifts and I know it's early to be talking about Christmas gifts but as crafters many of us like to uh, get our gifts ahead of time or make our gifts ahead of time because there's no way you can start close to christmas and get everybody's made if you're one who likes to make your christmas gifts so these are something that uh, would be easy to make and fairly quick and um, easy to store until christmas so um, i just think these are a good um, a good solution to a lot of crafters problems that they like to craft but maybe they don't have a store or um, or they just don't really have an outlet for their items and you can only give so many items away but jewelry you can make different pieces of jewelry uh, for one person or even yourself and it's just something that doesn't take much to store. So I just think that that's a good solution for some crafters who enjoy making but don't have anything to do with their items. Again, not everyone is going to like this. And I understand that. This is definitely not for everyone. Uh, but it is, it is good for some of us who like this sort of thing. Now this particular uh, piece is going to be a bracelet. So here I am cutting that warm and natural just a little bit smaller than my applique. Again, I've cut the applique down. It's one of the same ones and I just cut it down uh, so that it would be smaller because as a bracelet, it needs to be a little smaller. And I'm just going to glue that again on with uh, the fabric hot glue. And then I'm just going to start adding those shabby roses and some pearl beads until I get the look that I want. And this is going to be one that will coordinate with the necklace. So I want to use those same colors. So I just keep adding these until I get the look that I want. And until I get something similar to what I have on the necklace. And then again, I'll be adding some pearl beads to this one as well. So now here I've made my roses and I'm just adding those little pearls as a filler. So you're probably wondering how I'm going to make this a bra bracelet. And what I'm going to do is I t attach a piece of um, 
of elastic. I think I used a seam elastic and uh, just cut it the length that I needed and um, attached both sides to the back side of the felt on each side. And then uh, that will fit your arm, but then we need to dress that piece of elastic up. So here I've already put the, the elastic on and now I'm taking some pieces of this same applique so it'll have that same look and I'm cut, cutting all these pieces apart individually. And the reason I wanna cut them individually is so that they'll fit onto my strap, actually, but um, also I need them to be separate because if I were to glue something solid onto that elastic, then um, I wouldn't get the benefit of the, the elastic stretching because that would stop it from stretching. So I need to glue these separate and then it will cover the whole thing, but then it will still stretch. So I just glue these uh, touching each other until I get the whole band uh, covered up. And then that will dress that up, but again, I'll still have the benefit of the lace or the, the elastic. And obviously it won't stretch as much, but it stretches plenty for what I need it to for it to be a bracelet. Now, if you didn't have the appliques, uh, and again, I wouldn't have if a sweet viewer hadn't sent them to me, uh, then you can always, uh, you could add some uh, shabby roses all the way around it. Uh, the problem with that why, would be that you would just need, and I, I guess it wouldn't actually be a problem, you would need to make sure that you didn't make them too bulky. Uh, you would make want to make them just large enough to uh, place on the band. And I would probably make those on something else first and then glue them on because the more glue you add to the band, the less it's going to stretch. I think that made the cutest little bracelet. And you could actually even turn it the other way to where uh, the roses were faced in a different direction. And that would also be pretty. So now I have one more piece of jewelry that I want to make. And uh, this one is going to be a brooch. So uh, what I'm doing here again is cutting some of these appliques apart. Now, I decided with this one that I wanted to use both of these appliques on the same piece. So, what I did was layer one on top of the other, kind of staggered, so that it would be more substantial. And again, all of this is getting glued with uh, some um, fabric hot glue. And I think I used the Sherbonder glue. Uh, you'll notice when you're using the fabric glue that it has somewhat of an, an odor to it, more of a chemical odor, I guess. Uh, so I'm glad that uh, we don't need to use fab fabric glue for most of the projects that we do. Uh, but once it's dry, you don't smell that. It's just when it's hot, it, it has somewhat of an odor. So there is my base, and again, I'm going to cut some of the um, warm and natural fabric to go behind it. Now, because this is going to uh, be a brooch, it's going to need a pin on the back of it. And I know that they make brooch pins. Uh, I didn't have one and kind of did this on a whim, so... Um, so I just had to make do with what I had. And uh, another sweet viewer uh, gave me some beautiful gold safety pins. And they're a really substantial pin. And uh, again, they're gold, so they're just a really pretty safety pin to be safety pins. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is use one of these on the back and I'm gonna show you an easy way to attach that. Now, obviously, if I were going to sell this, uh, then I would, I'll probably just give this to someone because I'm just kind of doing this as an example. But uh, if I were to sell it, uh, then obviously I would want to put an actual brooch pin on the back of it. 
but the safety pin will work just fine since I'm giving it as a gift. And this one will get the same technique. Now, I don't add any pink to this one. I kept this one more just neutral. Uh, but I'm just adding these little shabby roses and some little pearl accents until I get the look that I want. Now, again, I know this may not be some of your style. It may not be for everyone, but uh, for those of you who do like this sort of thing, um, it is a very fun project to do with very little uh, materials and not much time at all. I think you'll enjoy doing it. And at some point, uh, I'll probably do another video on this and maybe change it up some. That is, unless I get uh, a, a lot of negative feedback because I definitely want to do something that a lot of you are interested in, whether all of you are or not. I know that when I go into the stores, especially the stores going into the stores for new clothing, um, I struggle with that because a lot of the styles now, either it's just something that I, I wouldn't wear because of the way it fits or uh, the style of it. I just find that most clothing lately, especially, it's just something that I wouldn't want to wear. So, um, so I really struggle buying new clothing. Honestly, I thrift most of my clothing anyway. But I think that uh, a lot of times when you like to create and you create a lot, sometimes that spills over into your clothing and uh, you want to start working on that, or at least for me it does. But the problem with that for me is that I don't like to sew. Um, I probably would like to sew if I got along better with sewing machines, but I tend to tear them up. I get the tension wrong on them for some reason, and then I can't ever get it fixed right. So um, I try to stay away from sewing machines, and any sewing that I do has to either be by hand or I just have to avoid it altogether and use the fabric glues. So I'm just going to skip through to the end of this little piece. I don't have much more to add to it. And then I'll show you how I added that pin to the back. It's a very simple way to add a, a pin. So I just laid the pin on the back and I cut a little piece of fabric and glued that over the top of it. And I didn't glue it on the actual pin itself. I just glued to each side of the piece of fabric beside the pin. And then the pin still moves around and I can just pin it right on. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening. And God bless you and your family.